Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Roundup, where we take a look at the news, making the headlines and the issues important to you. We begin with a roundup of the top stories from around the world in the past week. Evacuations of foreign nationals continue as more than 100,000 people have been withdrawn from Kabul. Dozens have lost their lives in multiple attacks across the capital. The world continues to grapple with COVID. As the Delta variant has forced new lockdowns around the world, there are over 400,000 new cases every day, with the number of cases only increasing. Unequal distribution of the COVID vaccines means that while some wealthy nations are discussing a third booster dose, many countries have yet to even start the vaccination process. And speaking of vaccines, researchers say that vaccinating young African children against malaria could save lives. A recent trial has found that the vaccinations were particularly effective when they were given before the rainy seasons in June. The Ever Given container ship has successfully passed through the Suez Canal. You may remember that the ship tried to get through the Suez Canal back in March, but it only got stuck. Global trade was disrupted for six days while a recovery operation tried to dislodge the ship. This time the ship passed through, delivering over 18,000 containers. And Cristiano Ronaldo has made a sensational return to Manchester United from Juventus. The five-time Ballon d'Or winner is returning to the club where he scored 118 goals, won three Premier League titles and he raised the Champions League trophy during his first spell at the club. Now, despite the very little media coverage, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict continues. Let's find out more about this decades-long issue. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The conflict in the Holy Land may be the most complicated conflict on the planet. From one side, you've got the Palestinian people who are living in this land from centuries. And from the other side, you've got the Israelis who are mostly Jews who came to this land after thousands of years, especially after World War II. First of all, let's talk about the situation in May 1948, when Israel was declared as an independent country, which is called a Nakba for our people, who were forced to leave their homes by telling them that they will come back within a week. But those Palestinian refugees are still waiting from 73 years, hoping that this week will finish soon. But the question is, how did the Ahmadis deal with these circumstances in 1948? A letter was received by Maulana Muhammad Sharif, the missionary at that time, from our uh, beloved Khalifa, the second Khalifa, radiallahu anhu, saying that uh, Ahmadis in Kabir shouldn't leave their homes and they stayed in Kabir and God saved them and Alhamdulillah now Kabir is a flourishing center in Haifa. This conflict was the biggest threat to both sides in the decades after 1948. As a result of that, 5.3 million Palestinian refugees are now in refugee camps in Syria, Jordan, Lebanon and more countries according to the United Nations. And about 2.7 million Palestinians living in the West Bank under a very tough lifestyle. And the borders in the West Bank are controlled by the Israeli army. And you've got more than 200 Israeli settlements in the West Bank. So here in West, in West Bank, so we live in occupied territory, complete like uh, almost completely controlled by Israel, Israeli government, and we don't have any full self-control. We are being exposed by a lot of restrictions, such as restriction of uh, freedom of movement, so we can't move freely as everyone. The situation was always very sensitive in this land between the two conflict sides in a lot of occasions. That made some Palestinian people to create groups believing in fighting back for freedom like Hamas and other political parties. Especially at the Gaza Strip. A lot of innocent people are dying in Gaza due to this conflict. And these groups are fighting one of world's most powerful countries and they are also killing some innocent people from the Israeli side also. These problems are going worse and worse in the last years. 
with some political decisions and agreements that are made towards the conflict. The Palestinian people felt that all the decisions and agreements are against them. For example, when the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, announced that he recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. That brought up a lot of criticism against that decision, especially in the Arab countries. Recently, we saw the problem of Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood in East Jerusalem, where some Arab people were forced to leave their homes under the order of the Israeli court, which led to a lot of criticism locally and internationally that created violence and tensions in the country and specifically in Al-Aqsa Mosque. Hamas leaders could not bear this as they started firing towards the Israeli cities with hundreds of rockets. The second side also fired back by airstrikes and killed about 250 Palestinian people. At least 63 of them were children. And about 10 people were killed in Israeli side also. Two of them were children. Huzur Anwar Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz mentioned that case in one of his answers in the mulaqa with the members of Kababir Jama. Vaisay, jab Palestine ka qiyam ya Israel ka qiyam ho raha tha, us wakat Chawiz Zuhrullah Khan sahab ne United Nations mein jitakir ki thi, ulan ne yehi kaha tha, ke yahan aman qayam nahi reha sakta, jab tak ke to in dono qawmo ko brabari ke hukuk nahi mil jate. اور فلسطینیوں کو بھی اور اسرائیلی اگر رہنا ہے تو پھر دو آزاد ملکوں کی حصیت سے رہیں At the end, we are hoping and praying to Allah Almighty that we will see peace in the Holy Land, the Land of Prophets, again. Last Friday, beloved Hazrat may Allah be his helper, continued his account of Hazrat Umar رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ. Let's find out more with our regular Friday sermon summary. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. As you know, our beloved Hazur, Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz, has been delivering his Friday sermons regarding the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Last Friday, Hazur continued to speak about Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu, the second Khalifa of Islam. Here's a fun fact. Hazrat Umar was not only a companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but was also his father-in-law. In the sermon, Hazul mentioned some incidents relating to Hazrat Umar and many of them were about the times of different battles. We can't cover them all in this segment, but here's a couple for you. Beloved Hazul spoke about how the Muslims had overcome many different armies over time, including at the Battle of Ray, Qumis, Jurjun, Azerbaijan and Armenia, to name a few. Hazul emphasised a crucial lesson for us all that in every single battle, peace was always preferred to war by the Muslims, and also that once peace had been made with the enemy, a treaty would be made, which gave everyone the right to practice their religion freely. This shows that Islam, which is a religion of peace, never allowed anyone to be forced to become a Muslim, and instead made sure that everyone could safely practice their own beliefs. This beautiful teaching answers all allegations that Islam was spread by the sword or by force. During his sermon, Hazur also narrated the story of the Muslim victory over Istakhar, which was a major city of what used to be Persia and is now called Iran. Many lives were lost in the battle there, but eventually the governor of Istakhar, a man named Hormuz, agreed to a peace treaty with the Muslims. When this treaty took place, the Muslims were very much in charge and could have done whatever they pleased. But Hazrat Umar instructed that all goods and possessions that had been taken unrightfully from the defeated enemy should be returned immediately. This showed the immense piety and justice of Hazrat Umar anhu, and also the nature of the Muslim army who obeyed him straight away. Definitely something for us all to think about. These were just a few incidents from the sermon. To hear more inspiring incidents, please make sure you watch the full Friday sermon with your family. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. The past year has presented unique challenges for everyone around the globe. For students and teachers, it has completely changed the way they teach and learn. We wanted to know how you have all been coping with the changes to your education during this pandemic. 
1.5 billion. That's the number of children around the world whose schools closed due to coronavirus in the past year. Roughly 60 million teachers were affected when the pandemic forced schools to switch to remote learning in early 2020. Most children around the world are still at home, even now, learning and facing all the challenges that come with online education. Students and teachers agree that learning at home has had its benefits, even though children have missed the social aspect of in-person schooling. I like online learning because you didn't have to get ready and and you didn't have to get changed like in a hurry. You didn't have to get ready and you could do the work any time and you don't have to go through a timetable. But there is no doubt that learning has been severely affected whilst children have been at home. Kekurangannya, uh, biasanya anak-anak kurang fokus karena uh, di rumah itu mungkin karena jika tidak tahu tinggal bertanya kepada guru. Some children didn't have the space at home to continue or to access learning. Some children were not motivated. Some children were struggling with mental health. Aku nggak bisa bahasa Indonesia, jadi ibu aku mengajari aku uh, bahasa Inggris kita gitu aja dan bahasa um, yang lain yang Urdu bahasa Urdu untuk menulis. Also, the pandemic has highlighted how different areas come with different challenges, with access to education being one of them. Setiap keluarga kan keadaan ekonomi mereka berbeda-beda. Ada yang uh, di atas, menengah, atau di bawah. Kurangnya pertemuan antara guru dan murid. Keadaan seperti inilah yang uh, membuat uh, agak kesulitan untuk mereka yang tidak memiliki smartphone. Dan itu akan menjadi kendala dalam berkomunikasi. Some of the children struggled with accessing the, the technology and the parents also struggled with that side. Where schools have started reopening for in-person learning, the challenge is to try and make up for a year of remote learning. Our main focus was mental health and to make sure that they were happy, they were safe and they were okay. I think with things like homework and elements like that, I think the technology should be there to stay and I think it will be. I think we'll be able to utilise that to really stretch and challenge for children more effectively because we, we got better at it. It will take some time to understand the long-term impact of the global pandemic to education, but one thing is for sure. While remote online learning was the norm for those of us who were lucky to have access to computers and good internet, it will not be replacing in-class learning anytime soon. Anna Mahmoudi, MTA Roundup. Now, Jahangir, here's a question for you. Do you know what month we are in? We're in August, obviously. Well, yes, but as Muslims, do you know what month in the Hijri lunar calendar? That's a good question. And that's something we'll be answering in a regular feature on Roundup. Muharram is the name of the first month in the Islamic calendar. The Islamic calendar began in the time of Hazrat Umar Farooq Anhu, who was the second caliph after the Holy Prophet And it was decided then that it should begin from the migration of the Holy Prophet from Mecca to Medina. That is why it is called the Hijri calendar or the migration calendar. The Islamic calendar is based on the cycle of the moon. Instead of the calendar that we normally use, you know the one that starts with January and ends with December, which is based on the cycle of the earth around the sun or Solar cycle. Also, Muharram is considered by many to be the second holiest month after Ramadan. This month holds very special significance in the history of Islam. And this history has to do with some very painful events that occurred almost 1400 years ago. Let us speak to a scholar and find out what Muharram is all about, what it means and how it is remembered. Assalamu <laughs> 1400 years ago, 
in the month of Muharram, on 10th Muharram, this painful incident happened. This was a very important uh, part of history when Hazrat Imam Hussain who fought against uh, the army of Yazid. And uh, there was a fight between the army of Yazid and Hazrat Imam Hussain Razilatalanho. And Hazrat Imam Hussain Razilatalanho fought bravely against the army of Yazid. Karbala is a territory currently in Iraq. So there he met the army of Yazid. This was the fight between the truth and false. He fought for the institution of Khilafat. Whoa. So we just learned that Muharram is a very important month for Muslims due to a very sorrowful incident related to the grandson of the Holy Prophet But what is the significance to the Muslims now? The event of Karbala is uh, very significant because of two reasons. One of them is that a uh, very dear uh, uh, member of the family and grandson of the Holy Prophet وسلم, was martyred uh, in that place along with the many male members of his family. And the second thing is that those who martyred him, they also claim to be Muslims. So it's a very tragic event. Uh, it doesn't matter how long ago any incident happened. What matters is that uh, what impact it, it has on history and mankind and what lesson we learn from it. Uh, normally, uh, Shia Muslims celebrate in two kinds. They hold uh, uh, these meetings, which they call majalis e azhar In those meetings, they recite and narrate the uh, sublime status, the high status of the Prophet and his family. The second thing uh, is they take out processions uh, it is mentioned that the Promised Messiah والسلام, used to gather the kids at home and he used to narrate that story, the tragic incident, tears came from his eyes. So this is how we should uh, remember. And Hazrat Khifat al-Masih, Khamer Sayyidullah Ta'ala ibn Aziz has uh, advised us that when the month of Muharram comes, we should increase invoking Drood Sharif. First lesson is to express our love for the Prophet Secondly, we should try that as Hadrat Imam Hussain Raziallah Talanho sacrificed his life, his family for the sake of Islam, for the institution of Khilafat, we should also be, be prepare ourselves. We should be ready for this sacrifice. It is only the Khilafat through which the unity of Muslims can be achieved. So uh, every Ahmadi youth, every child, every adult should always remain vigilant for the protection and establishment of Khilafat. Well, that's your honor for today. Hope you learned lots. I'm Musaf Ahmed, reporting from MTA International Canada Studios. We ask you to tell us what you think about the topics we covered in today's program. And here's what you had to say. I'm really, really grateful that I live in a country where I can even attend school. But put that aside, Honest school is amazing. The, the teachers are trying their best, and um, it's going well, but I prefer in-person school because it's I'm not learning as well as I should have been in in-person school. And I also remember that last year I had online learning, and I really did not much like it because I missed my friends, and I also missed being in school. So this year, please pray for me that I don't have to do online learning this year. I feel bad for the Palestinian people because they are being persecuted in their own country. I hope they find justice and peace soon. I just want to say sorry for the people in Palestine that have to go through losing their loved ones, losing their cars, losing their homes, and losing all their money. So I just want them to live a better life. And I hope all this chaos in um, Palestine stops. I mean. Keep an eye out on our social media channels for upcoming topics every week so you can send us your views to be featured on Roundup. Now, we have another great regular feature which we'll be bringing you on Roundup. Our Jamaat has spread to all the corners of the earth. We want to bring you a small piece of how different life is for kids around the globe. That's right. Today we are taking you around the world to the Marshall Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Assalamu 
मैदान माया लोग बिजने के लिए ये कुछ भी आवाज़ आओ ये 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 कुछ आओ ये 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 That's all we have time for now. Make sure you send us your comments and feedback to roundup at mta.tv. And if you have a story that you think we should bring to our viewers, you can email us. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates. We will be back next week with another episode of Roundup. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum. I shall call the message to reach all the corners of the earth.